my family and I, we used to live up in Bellingham. And the mountain that everyone talks about up there is Mount Baker. And so my friend Scott and I one day went on a day hike up on Mount Baker. And it was summertime, so there was rocks visible and snow and all that. It's not like we're standing on a glacier or something, but, you know, nice enough to be able to just do, do a day hike. And we, we came around this corner, and there we saw this little animal. And I said, what is that? He said, it's a marmot. And I don't know if you know what a marmot is. I, I didn't know. But it's like this, this, this large mountain gopher. <laughs> And there, when we saw, we just saw this, this one marmot, and I was like, hey, I wonder how close we can get to it. So I just started gently, slowly, just assuming at any second he was going to run the other direction, because he was just s- s- sitting there looking at us. Who are, who are these tall creatures that are coming towards me? So I, I was like, man, I can't believe he's letting us get this close. So I just keep going closer, closer, closer. I cannot believe it. He did not run away. He just just uh, stood his ground and uh, just, uh, you know, the two little beady eyes just right on me the whole time. So I, I come closer, come closer. I, I cannot believe it. I am right next. The marmot is right there. And it reached out and bit my shoe. And then it ran away. <laughs> that was the freakiest thing. I could not believe it. Just don't worry. It didn't draw blood or anything like that. But like, oh, wow, there's this two little long, extra long middle teeth whoop, right there in my white tennis shoe. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, wow. Okay. So today, I want to talk to you about coming closer. Do you see what I did there? In James chapter 4, verse 8 is our verse today. I really want to focus on this verse and drill down on this verse together. It's a a verse in the New Testament, and I love this verse because there's a promise in it. And this is what it says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. It's so good and so simple. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. This is one of those conditional promises. And it's one of God's great and precious promises. So many times we settle for feeling distant from God. Do you, do you ever think that feeling distant from God is the norm? And a great uh, in, in impacting experience with God, that's the rare treat? So many times we trade really knowing God for knowing about God. And we think that that is an equal swap, but it is not. We, we have a relationship with words on a page instead of a daily conversation with the living word, Jesus Christ. So many times we substitute doing for being. We substitute doing even things for God instead of being with God. And the danger is, is that you can get to the end of your lifetime and say, hi, Jesus, I did this for you and this and this and this. And Jesus goes, and you would be, that's my rephrase of something that Jesus told us is going to happen. He said, at the end of the age, he's going to say to certain people, depart from me. I never knew you. And that that knowing is a knowing of experience. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, none of us wants that. So today I want to talk about two different sides of experiencing God. And both are important, and they're both uh, alluded to in that verse in James 4.8. So the two different sides are, the first side is cultivating your awareness of God's presence. Your awareness of God's presence. This is on you. This is on me. It's up to us to cultivate our awareness of God's presence. But there's a second part, and that is God's revealing of himself to you. And that's on him. That is up to him. And we see the two sides of this coin several times in the Bible. I think back to Moses, the great leader uh, of Israel, leading them out of of Egypt towards the promised land. And as they were traveling, there, there were times when Moses who had sent up a what he called a tent of meeting outside the camp. So this is not the tabernacle where they worshiped. 
this was a place for Moses to hang out with God. It was not like the offering sacrifices, not all that kind of stuff. It was a tent of meeting. Moses would go out to the tent of meeting, hoping, desiring, expecting to meet with God. And then God would come down in a pillar of cloud at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And the Bible says that God would talk with Moses face to face as one talks with a friend. There's two things happened there. Moses went... Moses went to a place where he was like, I'm setting aside this time and this place to cultivate cultivate my awareness of the presence of God. I want to go be with God. And God also, it was up to him, he also said, I'm coming down in a pillar for that. Like, yes, I'm, I'm all over it. But we also see this in Jesus. So Jesus goes to John the Baptist. John's out there baptizing everybody for repentance of sins. And Jesus, the one perfect human, fully God, fully man, comes to John. John goes, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not baptizing you. You ought to be baptizing me. And what did Jesus say? No, we're going to do this to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, Jesus said, I I am going to do this thing that we are called to do in order to be good with God, in order to be close to God, in order to be in right standing with God, righteous. Jesus said, we, I need to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness, to do all the things that God has commanded me to do. So he does this thing. He, he's, he, he, he says, I, I want to be right. I, I, I want to show. Obviously, he was, he was God. So he's right with God. But he's showing us how to be right with God. And he said, I'm going to fulfill all righteousness. And then what did God the Father do? reveals himself in a spectacular way. There's a voice from heaven that says, this is my son, my, my dearly loved son who, who, who pleases me so much and whom I love so much. And then the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove. This is remarkable. So you see these two sides of the coin where a person does something to move closer to God, and then God responds with something amazing and miraculous. The first part is up to you. And that's good news. Come close to God. There it is. Mystery solved. Four words. Come close to God. That's your part. And the second part is up to God. And God will come close to you. That is the promise. But does God ever really leave? Like, does God sometimes not on earth and sometimes is? Well, Psalm 139, we always want to go to the Bible for those answers. Verse 7 says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. Here's the thing. God is everywhere. He is omnipresent. And and one of my other favorite words, he is ubiquitous. He is in all places at the same time. God is everywhere. He fills all things. God is with you 24-7, he never leaves you. That is the truth. And yet, sometimes your experience of God is very distant. It is very silent. You have no idea where he is. You pray and you don't hear a thing or you don't feel a thing. That is part of our experience. In Exodus 33, verse 3, God himself comments on this. And he said to Moses, okay, Moses, go lead the people. Go up to this land that flows with milk and honey, but I will not travel among you. Wait a minute. We just said God is everywhere, literally everywhere. And then God says, I'm not going with you. I'm not going to travel among you for you are a stubborn and rebellious people. And he goes on to say, if I traveled with you guys, I'd have to give you a big spanking. (laughs) So, so God says to Moses, I, I'm not going to travel among you. That is speaking to this thing that I'm talking about. God is everywhere, but your experience of God is not always tangible. At other times, and a little bit later in the same chapter, your experience of God is tangible. It is personal. It does have high impact. Like, oh, man, my emotions are touched. I'm, I'm joyful. I'm crying. I'm kneeling. Uh, I, I, I'm feeling guilty about my sin, convicted about my sin. Th- those are times when God's presence is so real and so tangible. And in Exodus 33:14, the Lord replied, 
I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. Here's all this language about leaving God or about God leaving, not being in a certain place, not being with a certain people. But we know God is everywhere. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the manifest presence of God. You don't always have it, and that is up to him. But there is a part that's up to you, and that's what, what I want to talk about here for the next couple minutes. His palpable presence is not always with you, his tangible presence. So when James says, come close to God, and God will come close to you, he is talking about this, this tangible, obvious, remarkable, high-impact presence feelable, discernible presence of God. And that's the promise that James has given us, that if you come close to God, God will give you the feelable, tangible presence. It is up to him in how he does it, when he does it, to what extent, all that stuff. That part is up to him. But the promise is, and this is a Bible promise, when there is a Bible promise, man, I want to claim it (laughs) for my life and for yours. The promise is come close to God, And God will come close to you. We're talking about his manifest presence. We know he is everywhere. Okay, so that's two kind of things we're holding in tension there. So how can you come close to God? Well, I I started thinking there's a lot of different ways, actually. Um, In the southeast Puget Sound area, we are surrounded by some of the most spectacular nature uh, in, in our, I think, in our country or the world. I mean, it is, it is so beautiful when you just look around. When you see a 250-foot Douglas fir that has been standing for hundreds of years despite all the storms and, and pests and, and famines and fires, and it is still there standing, wow! There's just something about it. Or when you see... The sunset on Mount Rainier, oh my goodness. When I am traveling south on 167, there are some places, I think maybe like south of Algona, kind of like that on on 167, where Mount Rainier is just over there on the left, just spectacular. And when it is sunset, all that white snow reflects the purple and pink and orange, and oh, it is so beautiful. Or when you're going up 410 and you get to the top of the hill going into Bonnie Lake, And the mountain is not just out there somewhere. It is filling up the distance between. There's trees on either side of 410 and then Mount Rainier right in the center. It is amazing. It is fabulous. Or do you ever go down to one of our many places you can get to saltwater, like uh, at at the bay, like Elliott Bay or or, or some place like that where it's really pretty close to us. You can go down and you can watch the tides go in and out and in and out. And every day, no matter what happens, the tide goes out, the tide comes back in. We don't get discouraged when it's way out and you want to go swimming. It's coming back. It's going to be there. And we don't get discouraged when it's all, everything's all flooded and you can't find the little seashells. It's going out again. Just give it time. But the fact of all that beauty in nature and all the order of the tides, all that kind of stuff, Man, does it ever cause you to stop and contemplate the God who made it? Like, what must he be like? What must his heart be like? What must his mind be like to come up with this stuff? He's so creative and so ordered with the tides and the seasons. Wow, what is God like? And does that thinking ever prompt you to just talk to God about it? This happens to me almost daily. When I see beautiful nature, Mount Rainier is my favorite. When I see that, man, I just go, God, you are so creative. Wow. And you're so powerful to create mountains. And I just begin to talk to God and to praise him and say how amazing he is that he would do that. You know what I'm doing? I'm coming close to God. And that's just one little way. Do you ever Fast and pray. We're doing it right now for a season, many of us, in this 21 days. 
that's a way to come close to God. That is, that's on you and you're doing it. You're doing your part there. Do you ever read God's word and get beyond just reading and actually interact with God? Like for me, I'll write little notes to God in my margin. Like, God, what, what, were, you, what were you doing here? Uh, God, what are you saying to me about this passage? I'll, I'll, I'll be convicted about something I read in there, and I'll just go, God, that's too hard. You know I cannot do this without you. I can't, be, I can't rise up to that standard of loving all the time, loving all people without you, God. This is hard. You've asked me to do this, but yet, because you've asked me, I know it's possible. I need you. What am I doing? I'm coming close to God. There are a lot of different ways for you to come close to God, not the, oh, a great way is kneeling on your kneeling, uh, uh, you know, uh, kneeling on your knees and just praying. God, I want to come close to you. That's a great way. There are many ways, though, twenty four seven, that you can come close to God, and that's on you and that's on me. I want to do it. When you when you come to uh, come to a, a gathering of the church like like you are in right now. And you look over and you see someone, and they just seem down. They, they seem sad or worried or troubled. Do you ever go, go up to them and say, hey, man, I'm, I, I, I just see you there. I'm, I'm wondering, are you doing okay? I mean, how, how are you doing really? And when you do that, you're coming close to God because that's the kind of thing God does. And he goes, oh, wow, you're joining me in my work right now. This is cool. I'm whoop. God is right there with you. His tangible presence. Many, many ways to come near God. This, this past weekend, we, had, um, we have two groups of grandkids. So we had the Snowhole grandkids. The Snohomish grandkids were with us this weekend. And it, 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 you just never know how it's going to be when they first arrive. Uh, this, is how, this is how Shelley and I are right inside our front door when they come. <gasps> Sometimes they're like, bye. <laughs> and they just walk on by. They, they, we're, and we have to go, hey, come here. I want my hug. Come here. This time on, uh, on Friday, little Finley comes in. Oh, my goodness. And she was in rare form. She comes running to me. Okay, in our household, we have five grandkids. Nana is the favorite. There is no question among all five, Nana is the favorite. She is the one. And every so often, they throw me a bone. This was my day. And Finley just comes running up to me, Papa, Papa, Papa. And she puts her hands on me, Papa, Papa, Papa. What? This is like the best day ever. And she comes up to me and real quietly says, will you push me on the swing? We have a swing in our backyard. Yes. <laughs> and she got to me first. Now, uh, Nana got out the trading cards, and suddenly the boys were interested in me because I, I trade with them as well. I have my own little manual of cards. And, uh, and they said, Papa, will you come trade with us? I said, nope, because I have a date to push someone on the swing first. I will see you later. And I did. I, I did both. But what was, what was interesting to me is that, I, that Finley pursued me, like, passionately. She was all over it, like, blah, 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 blah. And that was so attractive to me. Uh, as a, it, it, it's the same, like, when you have a friendship. When, when someone is just, you think, wow, they, they, um, their, their hobbies interest me, or their speaking interests me, or... Uh, they're just their presence interests me, or I see that they're they're into sports. That interests me. It's attractive. It's a tr it attracts you. Now Finley did not come to me with formulas. She didn't demand. She just came to me with passion. So glad to be with you, Papa. Will you be with me? That was very attractive to me, and her passionate pursuit touched my heart. The promise is, come close to God, and God will come close to you. But in our experience, sometimes you, do, you, don't, you, you sense God's right there with you, speaking to you, loving you, and sometimes you don't. And I have often heard repeated, and it's one of those things 
So because I've heard it so much, I've even said it. I've repeated it. Well, if God seems distant, who moved? Smack, smack, put down. You're a, you're, you must be doing something bad or something wrong. You must have left God in the dust. Well, that's a little harsh and a little judgmental, don't you think? And it's not always true. Sometimes you've been fasting and praying for three days and haven't heard or felt a thing. That's not that you moved away from God. You pursued him. So it's not always true to say that. Well, if God seems far away, who moved? Maybe you hadn't moved. Maybe you had not drifted away from God. I know this. You cannot earn God's presence. You cannot demand God's presence. We're talking about his tangible presence, okay? You cannot demand it, but you can attract it. You can attract God's tangible presence in your life. That is how relationships work. It happens in dating relationships. Uh, uh, you, you look towards me, I look towards you. Uh, you tell me a little about you, I tell you a little bit about me. And attraction develops. It happens in friendships. Take notice of what God finds attractive. What does God find attractive? What would attract his presence to you? Moses somehow attracted God's presence to him. God said, I don't want to be with those people. They're a bunch of stubborn, rebellious people. I I can't even go with you or I will just have to Discipline them the whole time. But then, uh, like 11 verses later, God says, but I'm going to go with you, Moses. I'm going to make you feel, make sure you feel rest in your soul. So what attracted to God, uh, what, what was attracted to God in Moses? What attracted him? Well, fortunately for you, I have a little list. And they all begin with H. It's so easy. I could alliterate the letter P all day long. I got 20 things that begin with P, but a bunch that begin with H. This is a banner day. So I hope you are taking notes. I don't know if I've ever alliterated H before. This is, this is awesome. Things that God finds attractive, all right? First, humility. Humility. Uh, you know that... Um, the context of our main verse today is, verse 7 says, so humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and he will come close to you. This is attractive to God. Humility. Humility is not saying I'm bad. I'm a worm. I'm a nothing. I'm a, I'm a doormat. I'm undeserving. That's not humility. Humility is saying, God, you're greater. I submit to you. I, you're greater. You're the one I want. It's not all about me. It is all about you. That's humility. I, I, a second one, hope and faith. Hope and faith. These are the building blocks of relationship with God. Hebrews eleven six says, and it is impossible to please God. We're looking for what pleases him, what attracts him. It's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. What does he reward you with? His presence. It's not just about his gifts. It's about him. He is the reward. Jesus said, go into the secret place and your heavenly father who sees in secret will reward you. What's the reward? Him. His presence. God longs to be with you. Here's another one. Hunger for him is attractive to God. Hunger for God. Hunger for him. It it, it is attractive when someone finds you attractive. That's part of it. That's part of attractive. That's what happens in friendship. Like, I might be thinking, oh, man, that pastor seems really nice. I'd love to be his friendship. And I say, man, I I just really appreciate something about you. And, And he goes, oh, wow. Uh, I, uh, there's something in me that's attractive to you. That's attractive to me. Well, tell me more about yourself, Gary. That's how relationships work. When you're hungry for God, that is attractive. Psalm 63, I read it last week, uh, 1 and, and verse 5. Oh, God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you. Verse 5, you satisfy me more than the richest feast. Hunger 
for God is attractive to him, and he satisfies that with himself. That is awesome. Heartfelt obedience. I had to push that one a little bit because it was supposed to start with O. Heartfelt obedience. We know that we enter God's presence through the blood of Jesus Christ, not by our own goodness, not by our own strategy, not by our own resources, not by our own anything. We enter God's presence because Jesus made a way. But I love this Old Testament verse that sheds some light on what God finds attractive. Verse 3, Psalm 24, 3, who may climb the mountain of the Lord? In other words, who can be with God? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. Pure means not mixed. Not part of the world, not part of this, not part of that, but pure towards God. People who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. We know we enter God's presence only by the blood of the Lamb. But here we get a glimpse of what is attractive to God. People who are devoted to God and not like half in, half out. That is not attractive to God. That does not pull him near. People, and I alluded to it earlier, people that are only about doing stuff for God and never about being with God, that's half in, that's half out. That is not fully in, and that is not attractive to God. And Jesus will say to some of us in that category one day, and you would be, I mean, your face is familiar, can't think of your name. I never knew you. Wow. There's something attractive to God about purely focusing and seeking after him, only worshiping him. You know, there's only like two or three different sins that were listed in those, those verses, and there are so many sins. It, don't take that as a, as a little list like, okay, as long as I don't lie, worship idols, I'm good. That's, that's not the point. The point is a heart that is seeking after God. That's the point. And that leads me to my last one, honesty and repentance, or for the list, honesty and repentance. <laughs> Psalm 51, verse 17, uh, David's praying to the Lord and says, the sacrifice you desire. What's attractive to you, Lord, is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. And he's not saying, oh God, you're looking for someone who's beaten down. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, you, it is attractive to you, God, when I say, oh, my heart breaks because I know I sinned against you. That's what he's talking about. David's saying that is attractive to God. And when you own it, that is one of the most powerful things you can do when you mess up or when you sin. It works actually in relationships with people as well as with God. When you own it, when you say, I did this, I'm not blaming my mama, my daddy, my teacher, my friend. I'm not blaming somebody else. I had a choice. I did this. I own it. When you own it, that is attractive to God. Wow. First John 1 talks a lot about that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. God is not looking at perf for perfection. He's not like, you have to be perfect or I'm not coming here. That is not it. But God does find attractive uh, the trajectory of a life that keeps coming back to God. God, I messed up, but I'm coming back. God, I've been, I've been uh, not really faithful to pray for a while, but I'm going to do it today. I'm coming back. God loves that. He can deal with that. He knows you're human. He knows you're going to mess up. He knows you're not going to be perfect. He does not even expect you. The, the Bible talks about how God knows our weaknesses. And so that does, that does not repel him. It, 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 what repels him is, is a life that says, I don't need you, God. That is not attractive to God. Or I'm going to fill my life with what I want to fill my life with. Just like Finley attracted me to her. Man, I gave her time this weekend. I gave her good pushing her on the swing time and playing time. And it was attracted to me that she wanted to be with me. It made me actually set aside some things, like duties or things that, that I might have done because I was so glad. She wanted to be with me. I wanted to be with her. That was awesome. That was great. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. He's talking about his tangible presence. Now, this is the final week 
starting, starting today, we've got one, one more week through Saturday of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And this has been a great way to come near to God. And I hope you have found this to be your experience during the fast. In, our, uh, in Psalm 91, I hope this is your experience, verse 1 and 2. Those who live in the shelter, the secret place of the Most High, will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare of the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. I can honestly say to you, we're, we're two-thirds of the way through. This has been my experience. I have been so delighted to be with God. I've not necessarily heard an audible voice, meaning like, oh, wait, who's, who said that? I, but I have felt God's presence with me. I have heard him speak to me, guide me, bring me to a Bible verse I wasn't even thinking about. Or, or speak to me, uh, uh, like he's been doing some stuff uh, in me uh, physically and emotionally. And I can't wait to talk about it on, on Celebration Sunday night when we're sharing testimonies. Uh, I think maybe around tables. Uh, I, I, God's God, it has been my experience. Now, I've been fasting all this time. Every single meal I did not feel or hear God. Every single meal that I missed. But enough that I was like, wow, wow, overall, this has been amazing. I'm doing what I can. I'm coming close to God. And the tangible presence, is part, it, that is up to him. However, it is a promise. It is a Bible promise. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. If, if you're two-thirds of the way through the fast, and you feel like this, man, I have not felt God's presence at all, then I, I just want to encourage you, don't give up. You got another week. Do something different. Respond to God during the day. Interact with him. Ask him a question. Comment on his mountain. Keep pressing in because the promise is come close to God and God will come close to you. Don't give up. Don't let the enemy put thoughts in your mind that say stuff like, I'm not holy enough. God's not interested in me. In, in me. I'm too I'm insignificant. That, those are lies from the enemy because God's word says differently. His word says come close to God and God will come close to you. That is his promise. God wants to come close to you. God wants to be with you. God wants to reveal himself to you. It may not be a pillar of cloud or fire. It may be, and that would be awesome also. But he wants to reveal himself. He wants you to experience him, know him. No doesn't mean there are two different kinds of no, unfortunately, in Greek, the original language, that, are, that we don't have. We just say no, 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 no. But he is talking about he wants, to, he wants you to experience him, to know by experience. That is what God wants for you. And I believe he's got it for you. Notice his work in, in nature and around you. Comment on him. Have a conversation with him about it. Kneel, on, kneel by your bed and pray. Read his word and interact with him. Interact with his word. Journal it. Memorize a verse. I've been working on memorizing Colossians 3, 1 through 17. And it's a long passage. But in the doing of it, I'm interacting with God and, and I'm seeing things about him and about my life in Christ. I, what does it mean my life is hidden with God in Christ? Oh, wow. I've just been thinking about it. That's one of the verses, those, four, those first two verses. I'm interacting with God, though. I'm not just reading it and, and checking a box. And that is come close to God. I want to encourage you, come close to God. And God will come close to you. Would you stand to your feet? Let's pray. Would you bow your heads with me? And online, man, join us, please. Let's talk to God together. Would you just bow your heads with me? Father, we want to notice you. We want to notice everything about you. We want to notice what you are doing in our lives and around us. We want to see what you've made and enjoy it and talk with you about it. We want to hear your voice. We want to see when you are wanting to do something with 
that sad person at church or that grumpy boss at work and you're wanting to you're wanting to do something you want to do something in their life we want to notice everything about you and we want to be with you we want to be with you the reward that we want from praying and fasting and i have a long prayer list of things that, specific things i'm praying for but the ultimate the number one thing and my number one entry in my journal, I want you. Lord, we want you. You are the reward. If we have you and we know your heart and we feel your love, we hear your voice, we can be patient when we don't see every little thing that we ask for happen this second. Because you satisfy us more than the richest Lord, I pray for every person that's a part of our congregation, every person who is fasting and praying right now. And for some of us, it is a struggle, Lord. But I just pray for a tangible experience of your presence. Lord, you said, you promised, and we hold you to it, Lord. We're claiming it. We're asking for it. Lord, we're coming close to you. Come close to us. I pray that for every one of us. Come close to us, Lord. Come close to us. Speak to us. Be with us. Let us feel your heart. Make an impact in our life. Lord, I don't know how all of the mutual attraction works in any relationship and even in our relationship, but I, I just ask you this, Lord. Come as close, as close as you want to which is close. Come close. I praise you, Lord. And I just want to thank you in advance, Lord. You are coming close to us. You have been over these last couple of weeks. You will over the next week and beyond. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With your head still bowed, I just want to give you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus. If you have not yet done it, then you have not even yet entered into this relationship I'm describing. How do you enter into a relationship where you are Jesus' apprentice? Turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. That's Jesus' invitation to you today. And I don't know where you're at in this room online. If today you would like to put your faith in Jesus to become a Christian, to start this relationship, would you just raise your hand so I know that I'm praying for you specifically? And Lord, I pray for every person in the room Every person online, Lord, we turn from our sin. We turn our lives over to you, and we ask you right now to lead. Lead our lives, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Man, thank you for that word. So good. Hope you feel encouraged today. You guys feel encouraged? I do. I do. Oh, so good. I just don't want to leave these moments, you know. Uh, one thing just as, as a helpful thing that we're offering right now, if you haven't heard, we have a Following Jesus booth in the lobby. It's just a resource, a free resource for you if you made that decision today. Or even if you know somebody who's recently given their lives to the Lord, pick up one of those books. Pick up one of those gift bags for them. It's really practical. Helps you know next steps to follow Jesus. Uh, and just a reminder, too, if you haven't filled out a Connect card, do that. You can do it on the app or on your Connect card. And on your way out, there's a little black box on the wall that you can just turn those in. Uh, I love one of the points that he shared is God responds to our hunger. And there's something about when you're hungry, you will make time to eat, right? And when it comes to our relationship with the Lord, we don't want to just pass up moments where we can be with him. And that's what tonight is about. Uh, at 6 p.m., our prayer and worship night. Bring your hunger, bring your expectation, bring your whole family, and God's going to meet with us tonight. Amen? Amen. We love you guys. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you tonight.